Hey there Econ students and welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be going over elasticity and the total revenue test. Now before watching this video, make sure you've checked out my video on demand and supply and maybe even the one of combining the two together. Those will give you a really good understanding of what's going on with markets and why some of our slopes are the way they are. In this video, I'm going to be just going over elasticity and we'll end with the total revenue test. The goal of this is to make sure that you have a really good understanding of just these concepts. So the first thing that you have to understand is that elasticity, all it's showing us is just the relationship between price and the quantity. Now what's happening here is the more elastic something's going to be, we're going to see a bigger move. So price changes will cause big moves in our quantity. Where something where it's inelastic is we'll have a smaller move. There's going to be less of a fluctuation of quantity when price changes. Our first type of elasticity is going to be elastic. Now one of the things you can see right here is I have my chart for pop. I'm looking at the demand. Now I can see my quantity and my price. One of the things you should notice is if I go from P1 to P2 or P2 to P1, that's going to result in a pretty big shift between my quantities. Now the reason why this is, is for pop there's a lot of substitutes. So let's say I raise my price just a little bit for Mountain Dew. Well if I raise it up even just a dollar, people probably will stop buying it. They're going to buy Pepsi, they're going to buy Sprite, they're going to buy Dr. Pepper, whatever they like. There's plenty of other options out there. So we can see that for an elastic chart, we're going to see some pretty big moves in quantity whenever we shift our price. Another thing we can see from our chart right now is our total revenue. One of the ways to figure out our total revenue is we'll take our price and then you're going to times it by the quantity there. By timesing the price by our quantity, we'll see how much money we are bringing in. With elastic demand, we can see that if we move from P1 to P2, we are actually going to see an increase in our total revenue, even though our price is decreasing. So elastic goods will have more sales. Now in order to truly know how elastic or inelastic a demand or a supply is, we need to do a little bit of math and use some coefficients. Now the formula is going to be the same for both. It doesn't matter if I'm trying to figure out the quantity or the supply elasticity. What you're going to do is take your percent change in quantity and divide it by our percent change in price. This is going to show us the relationship between our quantity and price and it'll show us how sensitive our change in quantity is going to be to a change in price. What we'll get here is an absolute number. So we're actually going to not care about negatives for this. It doesn't matter there. All you care about when doing this is is it greater than 1 or less. If our answer is greater than 1, it's going to be an elastic demand. The bigger the number, the more elastic it is and the bigger the change is going to be to a change in price. Now what happens though if it's going to be less than 1? If our answer is less than 1, we're going to have an inelastic demand or supply, depending on which one we are trying to figure out. The smaller that number, the smaller the change percent in quantity in relation to the change in price. The bigger the number, the bigger the move. One of the things you can see over here is I have a chart for gasoline. This is a perfect example of an inelastic good. Now I can see the demand isn't going to fluctuate. I'm going to have to really change my price a lot to have any influence over the demand. Why is that though? Well one, there's no substitutes here. I have to put gas in my car. I can't put other things in it. Gas is really all I can put. At the same time though, when the price goes down, we can see more people are buying, but at the same time I'm going to tap out eventually. I can only put so much gas into my car. It's not like you're going to start stockpiling gasoline and hoarding it in your garage. That doesn't happen. And at the same time too, when price goes up, my demand doesn't fall by that much because no matter what I have to buy it. One of the things we can see here too when looking at this chart is with total revenue. When I change my price points, if I ever lower my price, my total revenue starts to go down. It'll go down with the price. So there's not a lot of incentive for companies to lower or put these goods on sale. So if it's an inelastic, what we're going to see here is not as many sales because it doesn't increase their total revenue. Remember again, total revenue is the amount of money I'm bringing in. So we've gone over what it means when our demand or supply coefficient is above 1, under 1, and 1. But what if it's at 0? You can see on the chart right here, this is an example of perfect inelastic. This would be an example if we ever got a 0. What we're going to see is there isn't a relationship. Doesn't matter what I charge my price, what did I set it at, people are going to buy the same amount. So we can see it's set. At the same time, what would happen if we got made an infinite number? 
and it's perfectly elastic. Well, we would get a chart that would look like this. It doesn't matter what I change my price to, I'm only gonna be able to sell it at this one set price. So as soon as I start to change it, all of my demand, all of that quantity is gone. So I'm locked in to this price point. This is gonna be important to understand, especially when we get later on in the unit and start talking about different markets. I hope this is starting to make a little bit more sense. On the screen right now, you can see the different demand charts that we looked at and what's happening with their elasticity. I've also added at the bottom what we have to get for our answers when figuring out our demand or supply coefficient to get these types of graphs. Now eventually in economics, you're going to get a question that's going to ask you to use the total revenue test. The total revenue test is looking at price and total revenue. We've gone over total revenue already in this video. Remember, to get our total revenue, we'll take our price and we'll times it by our quantity. This is gonna show us how much money we are bringing in. How many things did we sell? So we have to have sold the products to, for this to be able to be factored in. Now, one of the things to note is whenever our price goes down and our total revenue goes down, we're going to have an inelastic demand. Now, at the same time, if our price goes up and our total revenue goes up, it's going to be inelastic. It's always inelastic when they go together. And it's always gonna be elastic when we see our price go up and then all of a sudden our total revenue go down. Or if our total revenue goes up, that's going to mean that our price is going down. With elastic, they're always going to be opposite. So make sure you have a good understanding there. One thing to note too is this only works for demand. It does not work for supply. The reason why it doesn't work for calculating out a supply's elasticity is because when we're looking at the supply, due to the law of supply, there's always gonna be more total revenue because they're always gonna keep trying to sell more. So it doesn't work there, but it does work for our demand. Hopefully this video helps you better understand elasticity, how to read some of the charts, how to use the formula, and just kind of understanding the main concepts. Make sure to check out my other videos of actual practice problems on elasticity, and my other video as well that goes into cross price and income elasticity. I'm Mr. Sin, thank you for watching this video, and have a great day. I'll see you next time online.